morning people happy Saturday and thanks for tuning in so I have a new name for this channel it is no longer potty mouth Jesus lover it is life with Mandy Kate so I hope you continue to watch and enjoy the ride and and be part of it um, it's just uh, just a new direction kind of that I'm taking so and I wanted to just kind of recap everything um, I make notes so those of you who know I have like zero memory a short-term memory forget about it, it's gone um, so it's kind of I will be reading from a script a little bit here um, I could never make it as an actress because I can't remember my lines so anyway here we go um, my mom she comes from a family of 10 and at the age of 32 she was diagnosed with breast cancer after being put off for six months because it was common practice in the 80s um, to wait and see if the lump grows. So she did, she waited and it grew. And uh, by 36, she was no longer with us. I was just shy of eight years old. Fast forward a little bit. I'm now 19 years old and I'm sitting in a consult room at the Carmanos Cancer Institute in Detroit with my mom's siblings, my aunts and uncles who were still with us at the time. And we're all waiting for our genetic test results. So we decided to get genetic testing done for uh, what's called the BRCA gene, BRCA1. So, you know, we're just uh, all there waiting and I'm literally sitting there as if I don't have a care in the world because I just know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my test has come back negative. Um, so, and I'm just there with my aunts and uncles to be moral support for them if one of theirs comes back positive because I just know mine is going to be negative. Well, he gives me a positive result and I lost it. Like, legit lost it. Um, uncontrollable sobbing, snot coming out of my nose, hysterical. And looking back, I'm like, girl, pull yourself together. What the hell? Um, I don't even know how the people in the room dealt with me at that point because I was ridiculous, like ridiculous. Anyway, fast forward a little bit more and I'm now 30 years old and I've decided to have the prophylactic double mastectomy with reconstruction surgery. Uh, why? Because without it, my chances of getting breast cancer before I turned 40 was over 60%. A little more than I care to gamble with. With the surgery, my chances dropped to less than 5% of getting breast cancer. So uh, for me, it was a no-brainer, total no-brainer. I was ready, let's do it. My husband, on the other hand, um, he's the, of the mentality of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It, it was a little bit of a struggle for the two of us. Um, however, needless to say, I did have it done. I don't regret it, I would do it again. <clears throat> Fast forward a few more years. And now I'm 40. Um, I go to the doctor for some lady issues that I've been having for quite some time. Missed my OB appointment that year. Um, I guess got too busy. I was too busy. I had to cancel it, reschedule it, got busy again, canceled it, rescheduled it. Didn't make it again. Didn't reschedule it either. So, uh, and I'm on my way to the doctor. I've already convinced myself that I have early menopause. Right, I've done diagnosed myself because you know I had put on a doctor hat at the moment and said, "Yep, I have early menopause. Let's just go get this figured out, taken care of, and uh, be on my merry way." <laughs> so I go through the list list of symptoms. The doctor sits down, looks me in the face, and says, "You need to go see an OB specialist." No, I wasn't having it. For what? I said, "What?" An OB specialist for what? Um, there's nothing wrong with me. I just have early menopause. Can you just prescribe me something? Write me a script so I can get on my way. I got shit to do. I'm fucking busy. I got two kids, a husband, a job, a home. I gotta go. I got things happening. Okay? Now, after my visit with the OB specialist, several tests, and now an oncologist, <clears throat> all over the course of about two weeks, uh, I was diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer. <laughs> So go ahead and have that double mastectomy because breast cancer ain't, what, ain't what's going to get you. Now we're going to the ovarian cancer. Here we are. So after about a week, I have surgery. Hella surgery. Okay. They literally gutted me. Okay. So the early menopause I thought I was having 
I'm now in full-blown menopause because uh, I'm now lacking, lacking a uterus, amongst other things. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that whole early menopause thing, it happened to turn out to be kind of that way, but uh, medically induced. Six months later, after chemo, after hair loss, I'm in remission. Totally awesome, right? Super, super cool. Um, however, with that comes all the things, right? Questions of my life, my purpose, my realization of how short life really is. What the hell am I even doing here? Why, why am I only where I'm at and not further along in life? Like all these things, all the feels, all the emotions. Um, six months prior was a roller coaster that had just left the gate. Today, I'm hitting all the corkscrews, not sure if I should be holding on or waving my arms and screaming. Literally, the ride is intense. Like, intense. Um, and I'm now 42. Well, not now, but fast forward a little bit from 40 to 42. It's about 18 months later. And my tumors decide to revisit me because they just hadn't had enough. So, thankfully, the hair that I've grown back and continue to grow got to stick around because of uh, new chemo this time. I only make it four rounds. My body taps out. Done. Chemo sucks. I can't take it anymore. It's done. It did work, however. <clears throat> the tumors did shrink. Um, the doctor let me recoup for a few months and then started me on the daily chemo pill. So today, literally today, I am 44 years old. I've been on that daily pill for about a year and a half. I see a holistic doctor and I take a bunch of supplements from him. Um, you know, when I can afford to put them in the damn grocery budget because holy shit, this stuff's crazy. Um, and I try to stick to a decent, you know, diet. Try is the key word. Uh, I love the plant-based stuff, um, but it is difficult. Um, for the most part, I try to exclude sugar and dairy. It's not easy, but it's doable. Anybody, if, if I can do it, at least part of it, so can you, if you need to. I do take RSO. Look it up if you don't know what it is. RSO. Uh, I eat gummies. I drink on occasion. I love me some vodka and cranberry and beer. Um, and I'm still here. I'm totally still here. I love me some Jesus. I still cuss. And I am still trying to figure out life just like the next guy. Um, I just happen to talk about it on YouTube. Why? I have no idea. It just seems like a thing to do. So I got me a YouTube channel. <laughs> Life with Mandy Kate is so it's called now. Um, so anyway, stay tuned into the new Life with Mandy Kate. Um, maybe we can work through this shit show together because seriously, any of you tell me you haven't been through the shit show. I don't know what planet you're living on, but everybody goes through it every now and again in one form or fashion. So hopefully we'll have a few laughs along the way. Always remember to give our thanks. It could always be worse. God is still good, people. I love me some Jesus. He is still good. So, now you have the recap. And until the next episode of Life with Manny Kate, I hope you guys have a spectacular day. I hope you decide to continue to tune in. And uh, let's see where this ride takes us. And um, we'll just do it together. We'll, we'll learn together. We'll wing it together. I'm all about winging it. So we'll just wing it together. Until next time, see you guys soon.